Okay, so this video is going to look at changing the mouse pointer. There's two basic reasons why you'd want to do that. One, you may want to change it because the default mouse pointer does not match the aesthetics, the art style of your game. And two, you may want it to change based on context. So if the object is, if the mouse is hovering over an object with an action associated with it, you may want to change the mouse pointer to reflect what that action is. You're giving feedback to the uh, player. A good example of that would be point and click adventures, where if you can exit and you point the mouse at a door, it will turn into, the mouse will turn into like a little door. If you can pick something up, it will turn into a little hand. If you can examine something, it can turn into a little magnifying glass, and it goes on and on. If it's a puzzle, maybe it will turn into little gears. If it's a vending machine, maybe it will turn into little coins. So uh, basically, you can expand this out as much as you want. I'm using just four, because once you see how this works, it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. So let's start with our background. So we're going to drag in the dorm image. Now. Um, the only thing I've done to this is if you click on the uh, asset itself, you'll see that I reduced the pixels per unit to 90. Because this is a ratio, if you make this number smaller, the image gets bigger. So that's really the only modification I did to it. So clicking on the dorm object again, let's create an exit. So add component, physics 2D, box collider. It's going to be a trigger. And the box collider defaults to the, the uh, borders of the image itself. So click on Edit Collider, and we want to bring this in so it matches the doorway. Now, what we want to do is when the mouse goes over an object, we want to be able to give instructions to the mouse to what it should change to. Okay. Now, because you could have dozens or even hundreds of objects, you really don't want to have to check the name of each and every object. What you're going to do is you're going to come up with a tag that corresponds to each state of the mouse, and then you'll apply that tag to the individual object. So say there's 50 objects that need to be picked up, you're not going to check for all 50 objects, you're just going to check to see if the tag is set to pick up. If there's 30 different exits, you don't have to check to, for the name of the exit, you just have to check to see if the tag says exit. So it reduces how many, um, uh, uh, how many lines of code you have to write. It makes it much simpler. It scales much better. So, say we want the mouse, first we want the mouse to change its default appearance. And the second thing we want to do is that when it points at the doorway, we want it to change to an exit icon. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new script. So create C sharp, and let's call it hover. Let's click on our dorm object. We'll drag and drop hover onto it. And let's double click to get into that. I'm going to go over to a text file where I have this typed out so I don't make as many mistakes and so you don't have to watch me typing. But don't worry, I'm going to explain it all. So the first thing we have to do is we have to add those images. Okay, so public texture 2D. So it's telling you that it's a 2D texture, obviously self-explanatory. And then this, so this is the type of variable, and then this is the name of the variable. You can call this whatever you want, but it really should be indicative of what that texture is going to be used for. So this is going to be the default texture. So public texture 2D, default texture. Public texture 2D, pickup texture. So this is going to be the image for when you can pick up an object. Public texture 2D, exit texture. That's going to be when you exit. Public texture 2D, examine texture. That's going to be like a magnifying glass. These last two don't worry too much about, you do need to enter them, but basically whenever you run the cursor command and you're setting the cursor, you have to give a few other commands, there's three arguments. And um, so the first argument is what's the image, and then you have to give the hotspot and the, um, uh, the movement. So we're just going to use the defaults for those. 
Now, what we want to do is we want to save this. We click our DOM object. And now, there they are. So, default texture. Pick up texture. So I'm just dragging and dropping the images. Exit texture. And examine texture. So what we need to do now is we need to tag this object so as that we can then check for the tag in the script. So I already created a few tags, so what I'm going to do is I'll delete them and then we'll recreate them. So we'll just delete, delete, delete. All right. So again, what I did is I just came up to tag and I chose add tag add uh, exit we'll add x in and we'll add pickup now we don't have to add one for default because default isn't an object there's a separate command that says to change the um, mouse to its default don't mind these folders, this uh, is just part of a larger project, so when you see those appear from time to time, don't worry about it. Okay, so now we've assigned the mouse images. Now we actually have to apply the tag. So that was just creating the tags. Now we actually have to say which one we want this to be tagged as. We want it to be an exit. So now we've created the tags, we've tagged this object, we've created the collider box for where we want the uh, active area to be. Now let's go back to our script. Outside of start, outside of update, we want to do void on mouse enter. This is a predefined routine, so uh, you have to get it exactly right. It's case sensitive, O, M, E, all have to be capitalized. If you miss a capital letter, it won't work. It'll think that you're just creating some other routine. So this occurs whenever the mouse first enters over an object. So we want it to do something. What do we want it to do? Well, we're doing the exit, so we'll grab this. And really, once this has been pasted in, You've, you've handled just about everything that you're going to need to know and that it's just going to be rinse and repeat after this. So if game object dot tag, so that's how you're checking for the tag, equals exit, and here's the cursor statement that I mentioned, cursor dot set cursor, exit texture, so we're saying use this, use the hotspot and the cursor mode. So like I said, these we're really not going to mess around with the door just using the defaults because it requires it. So we'll save that. So that's on mouse enter. But there's nothing here saying what to do once you've exited an object. It doesn't just automatically do that on its own. You have to create that. So void on mouse exit. Now what's great about this is it doesn't matter what you're exiting, you really want it to just go back to the default. So we'll take this, put it in here, and this will be the default texture, which we also declared up here. So um, when the mouse passes over an object that has a tag of exit, the exit texture will be applied to the mouse. When you exit any object at all, it'll go back to the default texture. So we're not quite where we need to be yet. We need to take this, we need to put it one more place in the start section. So when this object is first instantiated, which is at the beginning of the level, we also want the default texture there or else it'd be using the system mouse. So now this should work. So it starts with our default texture that or yes, our default texture as opposed to the system's default texture. We point at that it becomes a door, and we point back and it becomes the regular um, our game specific default texture. 
And that is really it in a nutshell. I will do a few more just so you get the idea, but that's the uh, that's the basics of it. So now, depending on how many of these you have, like I said, you could have uh, many more. You could do uh, a coin one. You could do a gear one. You might have seven, eight, nine of these, depending on how much information you want to give to the player. So. If you've got a hundred objects in the game, or if you have like loot drops, you technically have an infinite amount of objects. You don't want to have to keep um, dragging and dropping these every single object that you create. So what you want to do is you want to create a default object that has all these on it, and then just tweak the default object. So let me demonstrate. Rather than starting from scratch and creating a whole new one, adding the box collider and adding the script and then drag and drop and these. Let's just copy the dorm, paste it, let's call it orb, we'll take our orb image and overwrite the dorm with the orb, and now it's basically good to go with the exception of the box collider. Well that's a lot easier to fix than doing all the dragging and dropping. So you can just remove this component and add it back in, and we'll make this one be a circle collider and then you just make whatever tweaks you want. Now, your new object is almost um, all ready to go, with the exception of two things. One, you have to change the tag because this isn't an exit, and two, you have to add a line of code for what this is going to be. In this case, it's going to be pickup. So tag, pickup. Now, you just go back to here and add a pickup if statement. And this is what I mean, because once you've handled this, you've really, you've got the, the bulk of the code. Now it's just rinse and repeat. So we'll just change this to pick up. And you just change this to pick up texture. And now that should work. So we'll run it. There's a pickup icon, goes back to the default. There's the door icon, goes back to the default. We'll do this again. So we'll copy this one, we'll paste it, we'll call this handle, and we'll take the handle image, we'll replace the orb. And maybe it's for like a hidden safe or whatever. Or maybe it's some kind of control lever if you're in a power room. And again, you just uh, remove the collider. In this case, let's use a uh, Physics 2D polygon collider so it's more close to the shape, more form fitting. And we just change the tag for this one. Um, it, you'd probably want to do gears on it because it's something you operate, but in our case, we do examine. And now you add the examine line of code. So again, it's just another if statement with two changes. In that the tag is going to be examine. And it's going to be examine texture. Save it. And that should be all it takes. Did I? Ch yes, I did change the tag. Couldn't remember for a second, but then I saw right there it does say examine. So examine, pick up, leave. That easy. Um, and what you can do is, like I said, you're using default objects. To save yourself a little time, if it's going to be an examine object, then copy an examine object. And at that point, you won't have to make the change of the tag that you've been making. But we didn't have one of each. Now we do. For the pickup, if it's an object that's going to be pickup, then copy a pickup object, um, and then just replace again, replace the image, replace the the uh, collider box, and you're done. So I believe that's it. Um, so we have the door, we have the hand, we have the magnifying glass, we have the handle, we have the orb. That should about do it. And like I said, at this point, it's just rinse and repeat. Say uh, you want something that you can interact with, so you would create a um, in the script, you would create a gear texture, and you would create a gear image, drag and drop it there, and then it's just a matter of um, creating a gear tag, 
and putting the gear in here. So, like I said, the, you, even this is a little bit repetitive as far as functionality um, because it's really the same principle over and over again. It's just a matter of coming up with a new tag, coming up with the corresponding texture, writing the line of code to look for that type. And uh, like I said, this scales because if you create 100 exits, you don't have to do a single line of additional coding. You're already checking for exits as long as you tag the object as an exit, which you can do, as I said, by just copying another exit item. So that should about do it. Um, there's another way that you can handle changing the mouse, and it's a bit of a cheat, because what you can do is you can hide the mouse, and then you can have an image move where the mouse is. Um, so I'll probably do a separate video for that because that gives you some options that you don't have in this.